This is the audiobook sample for Curved, a bent, not broken novella, by Kai Brightly and M.D. Gregory. This is my 30th audiobook, and it was released on October 28th, 2020. Curved is a continuation of Bent, Not Broken, a title that was released last month. It's a heartwarming little addendum to a story that I feel, personally, deserved it. Something about the chemistry between the two characters, Madden and Evan, warranted some extra story, so I'm glad they went through with it. Some of the story elements in this novella include expounding upon Evan's insecurity by highlighting his unwillingness to engage in certain sex acts, as well as highlighting Madden's shaky and unusual relationship with his father and how that has molded and affected his relationship with Evan. Madden's story is of particular note. His father is not a strictly evil man, but he struggles with overcoming his prejudice in the face of losing his son, such that their relationship has suffered over many years. These are great plots to unfold, and they seamlessly help develop each character, and the dynamics between them all, very effectively, without seeming like an unnecessary addition. In short, taking their story in this direction was both organic and wise. If you liked Bent, Not Broken, or enjoyed any of the other gay romances I've done by the same authors, I would definitely check this novella out. It represents a deepening growth of complexity in these writers' mindsets. I hope you enjoy this audiobook sample. I grunted. Yeah, come on, get dressed. We have a date. Excitement danced across his face in the form of a grin and sparkling eyes, and he nearly bounced over to rifle through his own suits. I rolled my eyes, but couldn't help sharing his joy. Madden being happy made me happy. The Argyle Lounge wasn't the fanciest place. It didn't cost an arm and a leg, either, which was great on my bank account. Madden was more than happy to get a medium-rare steak, while I went with pork chops. No matter how dingy the place looked, it sported velvet seats and booths straight from the 70s, the food always tasted delicious, and it didn't take me long to devour it. You can breathe while you eat, too, Madden laughed, nudging me from his spot in the booth next to me. Over his shoulder, my gaze got stuck briefly on the horrific red and black diamond patterned walls that gave the lounge its name. The seat curled in a semicircle and was big enough for six people, but Madden always sat against my side, hopeful for snuggles while we ate. No one batted an eye at us. And we weren't the only same-sex couple here, either. I'd already seen a gay couple we'd run into on more than one occasion. I couldn't remember their names, but they waved exuberantly every time they saw us, and all I could manage was an embarrassed half-wave. Madden, on the other hand, greeted them like long-lost friends, kissing each of their cheeks. I'm hungry, I said with a shrug. God-awful singing came from the stage, and I glanced that way. Two drunk women had their arms around each other, leaning their shoulders together to stay standing, and they shared a microphone. They were squinting at a screen, trying to read the lyrics of whatever song they were slaughtering. They swayed, and for a moment, I thought they'd fall over, but somehow, they managed to keep their balance while giggling like maniacs. The song went on for far too long, and their off-tune garbled words made me cringe. Why do people embarrass themselves like that? I snorted and finished off the last piece of meat on my plate before laying the utensils on the china and pushing it away. Madden grinned. Karaoke is fun. If by fun you mean torture, then sure. I nudged his shoulder, and he laughed. We should do it. My eyes widened. Fuck no. Please. He fluttered his eyelashes at me in an overdramatic way I would have found adorable if I wasn't absolutely horrified by his suggestion. Madden, let me repeat that. Fuck. No. He rested his chin on my shoulder, his eyelids getting an extra workout with how rapidly he batted them at me. I glanced away, but when I looked back at him again, 
He hadn't moved. I can't sing to save my life, I argued. True terror at the thought of getting up on that stage, making my chest tighten. The women had finished and left the light-filled platform, their heels clicking on whatever it was made of. No one had bothered to get up and go for it, which made my panic grow even more. There was no way I could go up there. No one would convince me. Madden's grin turned wicked, and he slid down under the table, crawling out from beneath it and grabbing my hand when he stood again. He tugged, and I yanked him back. I can't sing, I repeated. Duh. No one who does karaoke can sing. It's for fun. I'm not drunk enough. My argument fell on deaf ears, and for such a short man, he had more strength than anyone would expect. But it wasn't in how hard he pulled at my arm. Rather, how he pouted in my direction. The man was a fucking charmer, and knew exactly how to get what he wanted. He flashed me his straight white teeth, because the bastard knew he'd won, and dragged me toward the stage. The crowd in the booths and around tables clapped when Madden guided us up the stairs and onto the section where two microphones sat attached to stands. He grabbed one and attempted to pass me the other, but I shook my head. I might be standing up here, but I was not going to sing a word. He shrugged and clicked a button on the karaoke machine in front of us to make it go to the next song. I glanced around the room. The spotlight beamed straight on us, and I couldn't see the crowd which was one positive. I suddenly remembered why I didn't like Argyle Lounge. A link to purchase Curved, a bent, not broken novella, is in the description. This title was a pay-for-hour production, so I do not make money from any purchases. Thanks for listening.